गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग सर फ्रॉम टुमारो प्लीज जॉइन एट एट ओ क्लॉक इट्स अ Do you have any doubts in the previous class? Let us continue. This file name is a dot java. This file name is a dot java. In this file, we have two class. Class A, then class B. Whenever you compile a dot java file, you get two class files: a dot class, then b dot class. You will get two class files. in the class b we have main method in the class b we have main method you can only run b class you cannot able to run a class because we don't have the main method we don't have the main method in the a class we do have the main method in b class in the a class we have one static member in the a class we have one static member static int i whenever class a is loading when this class a is loading carefully observe whenever we try to run b class it is going to invoke the main method of b class then we are trying to load a class member a class member by using class reference a dot i in the a class we have the member i we are trying to print that value if you are trying to use a class member i first what happens class a should be available in the memory class a should be available in the memory first a class will be loaded into the memory first class a will be loaded into the memory while loading i will be loading with the zero while loading i will be loading with the zero the same thing it is printed here whenever you 
try to execute the B class. Whenever you try to execute B class, what happens? First, initially, B will be loaded to the memory. B class will be loaded to the memory. After that, it is going to call main method of the B class. Then, whenever you are trying to access the A class member I, A has to be available in the memory. Then A is going to load to the memory. Class A is going to load to the memory. Then, we are printing the value of I. Whenever class A is loading, I is loading with the zero. That the zero is going to print. Name of the Java file, it is a.java. In fact, we can able to save this file with any name because no class has been declared with public. Simply you get zero. Come to the next. File name is c.java. We have two classes, class C and a class B. Come to the class D because we are going to run class D since it is having the main method. From main, then we are going to print the value of i from C class. C has to be available in the memory. So C class C is going to load to the memory now. Class C is going to load to the memory. Whenever it is loading, I is loading into the zero. I is loading into the zero. Then here, what you will get? Zero. From main, zero. Then we are calling the test method from the C class. We are calling test method from the C class. If any method is static inside a class, we are going to call that method. We are going to call that method by using class reference. We can able to call static methods by using class reference. Why I'm using here class reference? We are calling test method of C class inside the D class. I'm trying to call this a test method outside the C class. We should be having some kind of reference. So since it is static method, Simply, I'm referring this test method by using the class reference C data test from the C class test method we are going to call. Keep one thing in mind while running, while running, while program is running, a class is going to load only one time, not multiple times, not again and again. 
once a class is loaded it is going to be used until the program terminates then a program starts to run if a class has been loaded whenever we are we try to print the value of i at that time c class load it to the memory then it is printed the value of i once again we are trying to call the test method of c class it won't load once again because already c class is available in the memory already c class is available in the memory it won't load once again it won't load again and again whatever the class has been loaded one time that class won't be loading again and again the loaded class itself is going to be used until the program terminates keep that in mind now we have made a call to test method from test current value of i that is zero syntactically proper name of the java file is c and we can run d class because d class is a rendering with it from main zero from test zero come to the next file name is m dot java in this program in this file class f also is having main method class g also having main method no problem in one java file in one java file we can able to develop any number of classes and all the classes can contain main method all the classes can contain the main method whichever the class you wish to run you can able to run that class file name is yantarjava if i run g class if i run g class from main you will get zero what happens here here whenever i am trying to access the member i from the f class f will be class f will be loading to the memory class f is going to load to the memory while loading i will be loaded with the zero so that is why we are going to get zero suppose in case if you are running f class you can able to you can able to run f class because it is also having main method here what i'll say g dot i there is no g dot i what i'll do i'll go for static int i like this instead of running g class if you are running f class what happens from main colon g dot i as of now g is not available in the memory g class is not available in the memory see whatever i am 
explaining it is a separate execution. Earlier, earlier, I have explained. Suppose if you have executed, if you have executed G class, okay. Instead of G class, if you are running F class, what happens? Class G is going to load to the memory while loading. I will be loaded to the zero. So that zero we are getting here from main zero. We can able to run any of the class because both the classes are having the main method. If I run F class from F main zero, if I run G class from G main zero. Come to the next. Now observe this static block. This is called static block. Static block. Static keyword opening and closing curly phrase. This we are going to refer it to as static block. In one class, in one class, you can able to keep any number of static blocks. In one class, you can able to keep any number of static blocks. All the static blocks will be executed from top to bottom only once. Whenever the class is loading to the memory, Whenever the class is loading to the memory, all the static blocks will be executing from top to bottom only once. Keep that in mind. You cannot be able to keep static block inside a main method. You cannot be able to keep static block inside main method. Static blocks should be outside the main method. Any number of static blocks you can able to keep. Before executing the main method, all the static blocks are going to be executed from top to bottom only once. In this case, what you will get? First HSIB, then only H main. HSIB, H main. H 
HSLV, HMA. First, all the SLV blocks are going to be executed. Then only main method. Observe this one. In one class, you can able to keep any number of static blocks. But all the static blocks must be kept outside the main method. You cannot be able to keep static blocks inside the main method. In fact, in fact, in any of the method, you cannot be able to keep another method. Method inside another method is not possible. Method inside another method, it is not possible. But here, this blocks. Here, this one we are going to refer it as block. Blocks. This is a static block or in short form SIB. SIB in the sense static initialization block. Static initialization block. You cannot be able to keep SIB inside the main method. You must keep SIB outside the main method. All the SIB blocks are going to be executed from top to bottom only once before executing the main method. First, you will get JSIB1, JSIB2, then only J main. All the static blocks are going to be executed from top to bottom only once, then only it is going to execute main method. JSIB1, JSIB2, then JMA. Now carefully observe this program. In the class L, we have one static block. In the class M, also we have one static block. In this Java file, you can able to run any of the class because both the classes are having main method. Both the classes are having main method. You can able to run any of the class. If you are running L class, it is very simple. You will get SIBL, then L main. But instead of that, if you are running M class, what is the output? First, you will get SIBM coming to the main method, M main begin. Then we are making it call to the main method of L class. Since main method also static, since main method also static, we can able to call that main method by class reference L dot main. I'm calling the main method of L class outside the 
L class. We are calling main method of L class outside the L class. That is why I must give a reference which class main method we are calling L class. Since main method of L class also static. We can able to call that by using class reference like l dot main. Now, main method of l class is accepting an argument string array string array. See, this is the string array and this is a reference variable. This reference variable can be anything. Not only ARGS. It can be ABC, XYZ, or anything. Now, we are making a call to the main method of the L class by supplying null as the argument. We can able to supply null to the string array possible. Now what happens? Whenever you are making a call to the main method of L class, class L should be available in the memory. So for that purpose, L class now it is going to load to the memory. While loading, it has to execute the static block SIBL SIBL then only it is going to come to the main method L main fine once again we are making a call to the main method of L class in this case class L is already available in the memory class L is already available in the memory so there is no need of once again loading the class L to the memory. So what happens? Straight away it is going to execute the main method. So simply we get L main. Whenever any class is loaded to the memory, after that time, all the static blocks will be executed. Already L class is available in the memory for this execution. There is no need of once again loading L class to the memory. Already L class is available in the memory. So it won't execute this static block. Simply it is going to execute the main method. You will get L main. Now one more thing you need to observe. We are supplying ARGS. See what is this ARGS? I'm supplying this one. This reference I'm supplying here. Class M ARGS I'm supplying as an argument to the main method of L class. That is also possible. This reference I'm supplying here. You will get more clarity once I start non static. After this static, we are going to start with non static. You will come to know what is a reference, what is an object. There you will get some clarity. This ERGS I'm supplying here, then I'm calling. The main method of L class. That simply means wherever this ARGS is pointing, wherever this ARGS is pointing, for the same, for the same. This ARGS also should point.
you will get more clarity whenever we start non static and um, whenever we are covering arrays. As of now, keep these things in mind. We can able to call the main method of another class by using class reference and in the as an argument we can able to supply null and also we can able to supply the reference of the reference of the um, current class main method that means from wherever you are calling from wherever you are calling that the main method reference you can able to supply is an argument to the main method of different class. Keep that in mind as of now. So what you will get now here we observe since we are running M class you will get SIBM as the first line of output. M main begin, second line of output. Then L class supposed to load to the memory. While loading, SIBL, third line of output. Then only it is going to execute L main, fourth line of output. Then once again, we are calling main method of L class. Already L class is available in the memory. It's not going to execute SIBL once again. Straight away it is going to come to the main method. L main, fifth line of output. Then, as the last line of output, you will get M main end. So carefully, SIBL executed only once, not multiple times. Static block of L class executed only once, even though we have called main method of L class two times. Static block of L class was executed only once because any class is going to be loaded only once for execution. Keep that in mind. Come to the end of Java. In this case, class name is Sorry, in this case, file name is n.java. If you compile n.java, you will get two class files. n.class, o.class. You can only run o.class, not n.class. If I run O dot class, what happens? O SIB coming to the main method. O main B. Now I'm trying to print value of I in the N class. As of now, N is not available in the memory. N has to load to the memory. Why N is loading to the memory? All the static blocks, all the static members will be executing from top to bottom. While I is loading, loading with zero only. After loading, it has to execute from top to bottom. While initializing and executing, I will be initializing and executing with 
10 then second static member is this one it has to execute this static block has to execute now it is id carefully observe carefully observe what is the output you will get after who main b you will get nsib okay then the value of i that is 10 now once again i'm calling n dot i already n class is available there is no need of loading once again simply it is going to print the value of i that is 10 here also simply it is going to print the value of 10 then o main e This much of output you will get. Come to the next.
keep yourself for this program. We can only run Q class before executing the main method. It is going to execute QSID. It is going to execute static block. QSID then come to the main method separator. We are making a call to the test one method of P class. As of now, P class is not available in the memory. P has to load to the memory while loading static block of P will be executing. PSIP will be printed. Then only it is going to call test one. From test one, then once again we are calling test one method of P class. P class is already available in the memory. It is not going to load once again. Simply it is going to call test one method from test one. Once again, we are making a call to the test one method of B class. It is going to call test one method. You will get from test one. Then separator. This much of output you will get. Come to the next. Class R. This is R dot Java file. Class R. Here we do have only one static member. Static in type is equal to 10. Come to the next. Yes, dot. Here we observe. Yes, dot Java file. In the yes class, we have one static method. Static void test. Come to the next. In our Java file, if I run P class, what happens? Whenever executing the statement from the R class. It is going to print the value of i. As of now, R class is not available in the memory. Class R has to load to the memory. Class R has to load to the memory. Then it is going to print 0. Sorry, it is not 0. It is 10. Because we have initialized it by using explicit value 10. So we'll get 10. Yes class. From the yes class, we are going to execute test method. As of now, yes class is not available in the memory. Yes class is loading to the memory. Then it is going to execute the test method. So we'll get from test.
compile and run in class. You will get 10 and from test. Come to the next. In the class U, in the class U, we have one static block. And in the class U, we have main method. Come to the next. D class. While executing B class, while executing B class, BSIB come to the main method, D main begin. We are going to make a call to the main method of U class. As of now, U class is not available in the memory. U class has to load to the memory. While U class is loading, USIB will be printed, then only it is going to call main method of U class. Then we will get U main. Separation. Second time we are making a call to the U class main method. This time we are supplying none. Possible. Already U class is available in the memory. It won't load once again. So you don't get once again USIP. It is going to make a call to the main method straight away. You will get U main. After that, control is going to execute B main main. Come to the next. F3. This one we have already seen.
also kept in static in time whenever it is loading zero then executing from top to bottom Are we initializing with the zero? Then, when executing this static clock, I will be reinitializing to ten. Now, coming to the main method, if you are trying to print i value, you will get ten. So this program whenever I is loading to the memory zero only then initializing and executing it is going to initialize with one then after that while executing static block it is going to reinitialize to two coming to the main method if you are trying to execute I you are trying to print i, you will get 2. So this one. Whenever I is loading, whenever I is loading, loading with the zero only, while executing all the static members from top to bottom, static block will be executed. We are initializing I to one. Then here static in time is equal to two. Here we have sorry, what happens? Compiler syntactically prop run here. You will get two. Whenever executing from top to bottom, we know that this i is a field. It is only considering it as a field. For this field, it is going to assign one. Earlier, whenever it is loading, it has loaded with zero. Now we are supplying one. Whenever compiler comes to this statement, now it knows that exactly this is the variable. This is the data type int. Now it is going to initialize this i with the 2. Coming to the main method, printing 2. But observe this one. What happens? 
Please observe what happens in this case. Please be observed. I'll compare this. We are going to get illegal forward reference error. Why? Here, if you simply say i is equal to one, okay, then here try to print i. Here we are sir. Combine. Now it is syntactically proper. If you try to run G class. You will get one. But instead of this, if you go for like this, you will get illegal forward reference error. Why is that? Whenever I is loading, it is loading with a zero. Fine, no issues. Whenever executing from top to bottom, carefully observe, this static block is going to execute. As of now, compiler doesn't know what is this I. Only it knows this is one field, but exactly doesn't know this is a I itself. Whenever it is loading, it is going to consider it as one static field. Sorry. Now, please observe in this case, we are going to get in this case, we are going to get illegal forward reference error because compiler doesn't know exactly. What is I? Compiler doesn't know what is I. That means we are going to declare I after the static block. If I had given like this, then it's perfectly fine. No issues. Okay, no issues at all. You will get zero coming to the main method then you will get zero what's it compile g you can also run you will get two zeros but the same thing you are keeping static in type after the static block you will get illegal forward reference here while you are trying to access the i see this is the usage this is what usage if you are trying to use before delay keep that in mind if you are trying to use before delay you will get illegal forward reference here of static variables in case of static variables before decay if you are trying to use you will get illegal forward reference error
but the same uh, like if you are trying to modify the value of i it is perfectly fine okay as of now it is only considered as a field one field doesn't know exactly it is i only it is going to consider it as one field for that field we are going to assign 20 that's it we are not using it we are initializing it okay in this case you don't get any error perfectly fine to get 20 but if you are trying to but if you are trying to if you are trying to use if you are trying to print the value you will get error please keep that in mind next So this one. class H. Whenever class H is loading, I is going to load with a 0, J is going to load with a 0. Whenever executing all the static members from top to bottom, I will be initializing and executing with a 0, then the static block is going to execute. For the I, we are supplying the value of J. As of now, the value of J is 0, the field value. That the field value is zero. That we are supplying. Now J will be now initializing to ten. Now what is I? What is J? If we observe H. First of all, we are getting illegal forward reference error. Why is that? See, this comes under usage only. That means this statement I'm trying to use the J value to supply the value for I. I'm trying to supply the J value to I. I'm trying to supply the J value to I. This comes under usage only. It's like exactly this statement. I'm trying to use the value of J. Here also we get illegal forward reference, illegal forward reference. But observe, 
if i supply here 10 okay for i value i'm supplying 10 for j value 20 now carefully you don't get anything any error syntactically proper both i and j value will be getting 10 because When executing static plot, i is initializing with the 10, j is going to initialize with the 20. After that, this static member is there. No? This static member is going to execute. Then static into j, that j is going to re-initialize from 20 to 10. From 20 to 10. But if you are leaving as it is, simply like this, you get 20 only, j value 20 only. But if you are initializing here to some other value, you get that value. Coming back to the statement, if it is like this, you get illegal forward reference error. It comes under usage only. I'm using the value of j for supplying value to the i. I'm using value of j for supplying value to the j, sorry, value to the i. This comes under usage only. So that is why we get illegal forward reference error. As of now, it doesn't know what is J. J we are declaring here. That's why. But the same thing, if it is like this, if it is here, you don't get any error. I and J, both will be 40 now. But if you are keeping this J here, illegal forward return setup. So please keep that in mind. Come to this. Static in i is equal to test. Carefully observe. Test method is going to call now. Simply you get test, then returning 10. That returned value 10 is going to be supplied to i. Now currently i value is what? 10. This static number execution got over. Coming to the next, this static number, SID1. Okay. Fine. Now, another static member is there, this one, SID2. This will be executed. Then, only it is coming to the main method, you will get done. Then current I value, that is 10.
not that output. is observed output static in time is equal to test first what you will get test to begin we are calling main method by supplying null as the argument we know that we can able to call the main method by supplying null as the argument since we are going to call the current class main method itself there is no necessity of using class reference. If you are using also no issues. We are calling the main method by supplying null as the argument. Come to the main method. Main current i value is 0. Whenever i is loading, we know that it is going to load with 0. That is by 0. Come back. Test end. Now it is going to return 20. That 20 is going to assign to i. Now next static number is this static block. This static block. So I will begin. We are calling main method by supplying null argument. Come to the main method. Main, as of now, i value is 20. As of now, i value is 20. Then SIB end there is no other static block or there is no other static member. Straight away come to the main method. Main current I value is 20. This much of output you will get. In the interview, 
the be loss is there any possibility of executing main method before it gets executed automatically yes we can able to call main method before it executes automatically by supplying null as a argument like this click the right button now compile and execute this program this much of output you will get Do the next package. Yes, in this type of programs are many. What is output for this? What is output for this? I is equal to 100 initially I is loading with 0 then I 10, 20, 40 then here I is initializing with the 100 then also you are trying to print Carefully observe. Carefully observe. Hundred, two hundred, done.
but the same thing. But the same thing, if you are doing like this, observe what happens. Simply I am trying to print the I value. Now it comes under usage. You will get illegal forward reference error. If you observe, see here, if you are trying to do like this, I is equal to 100. I is going to be initialized, initialized with 100. Also, it is going to print the value 100. But if you are trying to use like this, simply I we get illegal forward reference error for this. Before declaring, if you are using it, we will get error. But here what I am trying to do, I am trying to initialize, supply the value. Then whatever the value supplied, I am printing that value. Okay. In this case, we don't get any illegal forward reference error. Keep that in mind. Hundred to hundred done. The next. What happens in this case? What happens in this case? Error by seeing only you can able to get. I'm supplying the value of j to the i. Now this one comes under usage. Usage. Need the forward return setup. Illegal forward reference. This one also we have seen. What is the output for this? Send me the output, everybody. Please send me the output.
I is equal to test. Test returning 10. Current time we know it is 10. Come to the next static member, static block. Yes, I be one. There is another static block has to execute before main method, so SIB2. Then only come to the main method, printing done, current I value is 10. Write the output for this quick. I thought to everybody. Cross check the output. Test. Begin. Main zero. Test end. Return in twenty. Now it's going to execute static block. This will be begin. Calling main method by supplying null as the argument. Current I value is 20. Then 20. This will be end. Now it's going to call the main method. It's 20. Compile and
come to the next app. App file. You know this one? You know this one also? This one also? This one also, nothing is there. Same concept. Same concept. Same concept. No changes. But I will give you some other programs. Everybody has to write the output for this. I have sent the program. Send the program for everybody. Please check. Write the output for this. Now itself, we should try. Now itself. I'll give you 20 minutes of time. 20 minutes.
I'll give you 20 minutes of time. Please try everybody. I've sent the program in the chat.
Sir? <coughs> yeah? Sir, this is a little bit confusing, sir. A test, a test one. See here, we know already what uh, this one is, right? I plus is equal yeah, to means what? Current I value plus 3. Right? Yes, sir. Then J plus is equal to means what? J plus I. Yes, sir. J is equal to J plus I. What is confusion here? Sir, next uh, means again. Next, we have to go for test again statement. Ah, okay. So we are uh, taking I value, right, sir? See, keep track so of to... I and J value. Yeah. Keep track of I and J value. If you are getting confusion, uh, use a calculator. Okay, to get big numbers. Okay, so that is why use a calculator. Keep track of I and J value. You get the answer. Fine. The one thing, practice all these things. Um, you know, check the answer. I have already updated in the repository this program. You can compile and run. Still, if you have confusion, ask me tomorrow. I'll explain. And uh, I'll check now uh, how many of you have uh, submitted the assignments that I'm going to check. So, apart from this, do you have any queries to ask me so that I can answer? No, sir. Some people have sent output. No issues. Check by using, uh, you know, just compile and run. Check. Fine, guys. We'll continue tomorrow. Please practice all these things. Have a good day. But I have just compiled it now. Ah. But it's getting, it's coming main end in this, after the uh, test method, sir. In the middle of test one. Yeah, after I mean, main. I'm sorry, they're calling main method, no? Right or yes, not? sir. Ah, that's why it is. Yes, coming. sir. Okay, okay. That's why.